good disability policy benefits all Australians. But the employment of people with disability in Australia is an issue of national concern. It's not just because the employment of people with disability is an important building block for such iconic social reforms as the National Disability Insurance Scheme. It's not just because we have a shortage of workers and people need to find extra workers to work in their organisations. It's because it reflects our values of diversity and inclusion as a country. And it drives how we think about our country and our people for generations. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which I'm presenting to you today and thank Dr Jodie for her wonderful welcome to country. I'd like to acknowledge the Disability Trust for inviting me here today, the University of Wollongong, mm -hmm. Mr Stephen Jones and Miss Alison Burns for attending today. It is always appreciated. And the members of my team from the Australian Human Rights Commission who always make me look a lot better than I am. Um, <laughs> in what they do. But when we talk about the employment of people with disability, and I often think of the employment of people with disability as reflective of a disability policy system that works well, I think we need to really look at how we're framing disability more generally. So the very pale arm that you can see poking out of the water there is my arm. It's me doing the Perth to Rottnest swim uh, with three other people a few years ago now. There's a bit more smoky silver in the, air than, in the hair than I would like to admit. And I think swimming could probably be described as glorified drowning at the time. But when people see that photo and they look at disability, I think the, the thing they often think is, why not? What they don't focus upon is the fact that I can't tie my own shoelaces or do the buttons on my shirt or cut my own food. They focus on what the person can do. Now the next photo is me on a large commercial airline flight. I won't name the provider but there's not that many of them. And it's what happens when a person with disability flies. And that's me waiting for about an hour for my wheelchair to be brought to the plane. And the flight time itself was about half an hour. And if you're lucky, they'll find the wheelchair in that time. It may or may not be damaged, but you'll get the wheelchair and you'll be able to leave on an equal basis to others, just a little bit late. And in that photo, what you see is the environment creating problems for the individual to adapt. You see the lack of function because of how the environment interacts with that individual's disability. In my role as Disability Discrimination Commissioner, I have to convince you of the first photo in terms of what people with disability can do, while at the same time creating policies and laws which minimise the effect of things that lead to the second photo. When we talk about the inclusion of people with disability in the workplace, it's of vital importance that we understand that today what we're focusing upon is not just why to employ people with disability, that argument has been made many times. We're focusing on how. How do we employ people with disability in not just a job but a good job and not just work but a career? Where they can build a future where they're viewed as an equal in all parts of society. And what I like to say to individuals when they're talking about the inclusion of people with disability is remember the three L's. Firstly, leadership. It's not just leadership of the organisation as a whole saying that this matters to us when an organisation decides to talk about sustainable development goals that it remembers that disability is mentioned repeatedly throughout those sustainable development goals. It's leadership in small spaces. It's leadership when you go out for coffee or you have an event, you include the person with disability in that event. It's also a long-term focus though 
We know that when you employ people with disability, one of the most significant challenges that has occurred over time is in a sense a place and forget mentality. That is that all we've focused on is just recruiting the people with disability and then in a sense the job is done. Well, a long-term focus should be the job's not done at that point. It's only just beginning and it's not a job. It's a relationship between equals to ensure that you can have a productive working relationship now and in the future. And finally, we need a learning mentality. That learning mentality is that we need to learn from what is good employment practice. We need to understand that we can look overseas to see what does or does not work. And we need to, above all, learn from others and be open to having discussions about how we can do it better. So when we talk about disability in Australia, it is important to conceptualise just how many people live with disability in Australia, but also some of the structural issues that have to be considered in ensuring that an employment program is fit for purpose. We know that 4.4 million Australians live with disability, but that does not have an age limit on it whatsoever. What we do know also is that the participation rate of people with disability has for generations been 30 percentage points lower for a long time. And when the OECD looked at the employment of people with disability some time ago, but the figures have generally not changed, we ranked 21st out of 29 in the OECD for the employment of people with disability. And the difference between the employment of people with disability for us relative to other OECD countries was approximately 5%. Now, it's been estimated by the National Disability Insurance Agency when it reviewed its employment practices that if we could close that gap of 5%, it would be worth in the vicinity of $11.9 billion for our GDP. So it is good business, not just business for the organisation, but business for the country more generally. So we launched the Includability Project approximately two years ago. We launched it on the back of a need to create a clear source of information for employers that is publicly available to hopefully change the narrative around people with disability. Our aim is to create social impact. It's not to allow an organisation to credentialise and say, we think disability employment is important. We actually want them to do something. And when they have to join, their CEOs have to join up to be part of the organisation. They have to sign terms of reference. And we went out and we looked at some of the largest businesses in Australia who were very open that some of them are outstanding employers of people with disability and some would like to be a lot better. And we've met quarterly with them over the last two years to discuss disability employment and to ensure that the lived experience of people with disability is reflected in those conversations. We have 17 ambassadors who assist us and they're people living with disability. Some of them have had outstanding careers like Dinesh Palapana, who's a doctor on the Gold Coast with a spinal cord injury or Naz Campanella, who you might have heard on the ABC. But there are also individuals amongst that 17 who have not had the greatest outcomes. And we thought it was important that that texture was very much applied to how the program was put together. But what we've decided to do and what we always envisaged doing was to work with those organisations to devise what would be appropriate in-location pilot programs that can be scaled across Australia so as to create a meaningful impact on the employment of people with disability now and in the future. And often when people look at diversity and inclusion and in employment programs, the instant analogy is that of gender. But in people with disability, the better analogy is probably Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander employment programs, which focus on the importance of community and they focus on the importance of relationships close to where the person lives. And so what we've tried to do is to put together two pilot programs which can hopefully be nation leading in terms of changing the narrative around the employment of people with disability. One of them, we're delighted to 
to be involved in is here in Wollongong with the Disability Trust. The other is being conducted in Perth with an organisation called Good Sammy and we're dealing with getting people into jobs with Woolworths. But if we look at sort of what we have to overcome in terms of employment of people with disability, we do need to realise that there is a really significant issue with structural disadvantage. Only 33% of people with disability in Australia have finished year 12. So when you think about the knowledge economy and the need to have post tertiary qualifications, there is a question of how you ensure that that individual with disability has the credentials to work in those fields. There are low expectations concerning people with disability in work, that it's enough for them to have any job. And we want it to be that a person with disability can get a job of their choosing. The your organisation realises that if I place someone in a job that I enjoy, they'll stay and they will flourish. We also acknowledge that some of the policy framework concerning people with disability, including the Disability Employment Services Framework, including the Disability Discrimination Act, is in need of reform. But we need data, we need evidence, we need objective criteria to ensure that when we do reform programs, they are fit for purpose and change lives of Australians for generations. So what we did is we've put together the Includability Illawarra project with the Disability Trust. The picture on the screen there is me conducting some particularly subtle advocacy <laughs> as the need for reform to the disability transport standards. But, and it is though one of the issues that you should always consider. How does this individual get to work? I remember having a chat with a law firm about why an individual was not willing to work full time and I asked them, do you actually know how the individual gets to work? It turned out that that individual was unable to work because the local public transport was not working and so it took them 10.30 to get to work because they couldn't find a way to get to work. Perhaps humorously, when they gave him a few taxi vouchers, he was there at nine o'clock every morning and is probably still working for the organisation today. We need to look at people with disability as a part of a broader community and understand how they interrelate with society more generally. So what we've done in the pilot program is sought to get employers to employ people for a minimum of 13 weeks, for more than 15 hours a week, at or above award wages, and you have to have started to employ the person by the 6th of February. Once you have the in-person employed and the Disability Trust's role is to ensure that that interrelationship works well and we'll be working with them behind the scenes to make sure it is fit for purpose, we will have quarterly online feedback sessions which will be undertaken and facilitated by the Australian Human Rights Commission. I have to apologise in advance. You might be seeing quite a bit of me if you join in the project. That's um, a sad, sad reality. But it is what we're trying to do is to try and make the facilitation work where what we have is community feedback to be undertaken from all the employers on a quarterly basis where we seek to ensure that problems that arise are looked into and that throughout the process we collect data and evaluate what's worked and what doesn't. We're assisted in this project by the Centre for Social Impact and Swinburne University who are, in a sense, our research partner that we've engaged, and they'll be assisting us to undertake the underlying analysis to ensure that what we can say, not just to employers, but to government, is that if you want to have an employment program that works in location and works well, these are some of the things you need to consider. But I really hope that you can come with us on a bit of a journey that journey is an issue where we tackle an issue that has been of national concern for generations, but it is an issue that changes lives. So thanks for listening to me and I look forward to catching up with each and every one of you shortly.